Hi, my pink rose petals. Today I am reading Passionate Love Letters, An Anthology of Desire by Michelle Lovett. And this love letter, today's love letter is Virginia Woolf to Vita Sackville West, July 4th, 1927. And we have here the exact copy of the letter and even where it's a copy of where she's crossed out and and made a note and everything so <coughs> Oh, my dearest love, why are our pleasures so short, so short, so uninterrupted? How long is this to last? Know you, my best Mary, that I feel myself in your absence almost degraded to the level of vulgar and impure. I feel their vacant, stiff eyeballs fixed upon me until I seem to have been infected with loathsome meaning to inhale, a sickness that subdues me to languor. Oh, those deeming eyes of Mary that they might beam upon me before I sleep. Praise my forbearance, O oh, beloved one, that I do not rashly fly to you and the least secure moment's bliss. Wherefore should I delay? Do you long to meet me? All this is exalted and buoyant, and the same nature urges me towards you, reproaches me with the cold delay, laughs in fear of spurns to dream of prudence, why am I not with you? Alas, we must not meet. I have written a long letter to Jane, though in no mood for writing. I have directed it in the feigned hand to surprise her. I did not for I could not express to you my admiration of your letter to Fanny. The simple and impressive language in which you cl clothed your argument, the full weight you gave to an ev every part, the complete picture, picture you exhibited of what you intended to do to describe was more than I expected. <clears throat> How hard and stubborn must be the spirit that does not confess you to to be the subtle and the most exquisitely fashioned intelligent intelligence that among women there is no equal mind to yours. And I possess this treasure. How how beyond all estimates is my facility. Yes, I am encouraged. I care not ha what happens. I am happy. Meet me tomorrow at three o'clock in St. Paul's if you do not hear before. Adieu. Remember love at Vespers? Before sleep, I do not omit my prayers. You are the agile animal, there is no doubt about it. But as to your gambles, being divertly always at Ebsbury Street, for example, at four o'clock in the morning, I'm not sure. Bad, wicked beast, to think of sporting with oysters, lethargic, glacious lipped oysters, lewd, licivious, oysters, stationary, cold oysters, to think of it. 
I say, your oyster has been in tears on the telephone, imploring Clive to come back to her. That's all the faith there is in oysters. But what I did, what did I come back to? A message from Daddy. And he's coming back in the next minute, and I'm alone, and Leonard mortaring, and we shall have two or three hours tay to tay. I and Daddy. Ha ha. Bad, wicked beast. At the same time, there were the mushrooms, the crab, the bed, the log fire. All shall be accredi credited to you. I'm fair-minded woman. You only be careful of dolphin in your gambling, and you'll find Virginia's soft crevice lined with hooks. I, you'll admit that I am mysterious. You don't fathom me yet. Who knows what, but here's Daddy. Honey, could you remember to bring my waterproof rose pink and my gloves I, scarlet? I flung them down the hall, I think. I'll keep Tuesday miraculously free for any purpose you like. Trey and I fairly hymn, hymned and caroled and chanted the praises of Feta and Harold. The wield of Kent was mere back cloth. For your splendors, this phrase crossed out. This is something very interesting. Only one reservation I made about our beds in as Ebbury Street and long earrings. Your Virginia. Pale, 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 pasty faced muffin minded shanks. Your brother in the Hawthornian calls me a dishonest writer. You so you see, you have Edith and I have Shanks. I hope you enjoyed. Namaste and have a beautiful day.